I want to go over 25 really shocking or surprising reasons why your blood sugar may be high. And remember, I will take questions throughout this. If you guys have any, just jot them down and you can ask me at the end, okay? So let's start with number one. Now, some of these are not going to be surprising. Some of these are review, but I want to make sure that you understand that it, just because, you know, you were diagnosed with diabetes, you know, obviously if you're a, a diabetic, you're going to have problems with your blood sugar, but some of you are, 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 you know, not type two, you might be pre-diabetic and you're wondering like, I'm eating right. I'm doing whatever I've been told, but I don't understand why my blood sugar is high. So the first one is the Dom phenomenon. And we've talked about this. I've done a whole class on this, but I just have to say the number one reason why in the morning your blood sugars are high is because you might have the Dom phenomenon. And what the Dom phenomenon is really quickly is between five and eight in the morning, cortisol is at its highest because what cortisol does is it is designed to mobilize glucose for action. So in the morning, you know, you want to be able to get up in the morning and have energy. So our bodies are designed to get you up in the morning, to give you energy in the morning. So when that happens, cortisol peaks between that five and eight in the morning, and that's going to mobilize more glucose from your liver to help you get up in the morning. So adrenaline, cortisol, growth hormone, glucagon, all are released in the bloodstream in the morning to give you an extra burst. So it's a hormone shift. So that's what the Dom phenomenon is. And I get a lot of times people say, well, you know, I'm not pre-diabetic, but my blood sugars are high. Well, listen, your hormones are designed to get you up in the morning by releasing what I said, the adrenaline, cortisol, growth hormone, and glucagon in the morning. And so I even have the Dom phenomenon in the morning. Now, the difference between me, not a diabetic, and somebody who's diabetic is my blood sugars might raise a little bit, but they won't go super high because my body knows how to downregulate and my insulin comes in and it, it lowers the sugars when it gets too high, right? So it's just sometimes I won't see high numbers, but I have the Dom phenomenon. We all have the Dom phenomenon. We all have these hormones that try to help us get up in the morning. But the difference between somebody who's a diabetic pre-diabetic type two or not, is that they're able to manage that, that blood glucose with insulin. When you, when your blood sugars are high in the morning due to that hormone shift and you have insulin resistance, the, the sugar stays up in the body. So that's, that's what the Dawn phenomenon is. I've done a whole video on this. If you want more uh, detail on that, you can watch the video. Um, so the second one is a lot of people ha have type one diabetes, right? And, and when their blood sugars are high, it's because your own pancreas is not making uh, insulin. So if you're a type one diabetic, you have to you have to inject insulin. So if you are a type one diabetic and your blood sugars are high, you are going to just need to first of all probably uh, inject more insulin. But you really want to figure out like why you should never have to increase the amount of insulin. You should manage it with your your diet, right? So if you have like high blood sugars because you're you're not doing enough insulin and you have to keep pushing more and more insulin in. You want to really take a look at your diet because you can manage lower insulin, injecting lower amounts of insulin, being a type one diabetic, and that's managed with your with your food. So you want to take a look at that too. Okay, another reason is uh, type two and the liver. So your liver makes glucose, you guys. So even when you are not eating, let's say you are not eating and your blood sugars are high. Well, what happens is, is your liver produces glucose. So there's a process called gluconeogenesis, okay? And that means that when your blood sugars get too low, our bodies auto automatically wants to release uh, sugar in the blood to raise the blood sugar up, right? So your liver does produce that, produces sugar. And that's the, the process called gluconeogenesis. So even though you are not eating sugar, your body can make it. This is why it's so important to make sure that you are eating the right foods because if, if you are on insulin and your your body is making sugar from the liver your 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 blood sugars are always going to be high okay so that is number 3 
another one is hypoglycemia. Now, some people at, will ask me, well, how in the world can your blood sugars be high if you have hypoglycemia? Because hypoglycemia is when your blood sugar is low. So it's kind of the opposite, right, of gluconeogenesis, meaning that when your body has a lot of sugar, okay, listen to me. When your body has a lot of sugar, what's going to happen is your body automatically is going to reduce, re, re, uh, produce insulin to lower the sugar, sugar. So then you have hypoglycemia, okay? So when your blood sugar is low, now what's going to happen is your body's going to produce uh, gluconeogenesis. Your body's going to produce sugar from the liver. And now your blood sugar is going to spike again. Insulin is going to come in. And it's going to try to push the sugar in. But if you have insulin resistance, it's not going to go in. So, so having low blood sugars will produce high blood sugars because why? Because your body cannot have too low blood sugars for too long a period of time. Okay, so it, it's, this is why it's, diabetes can be really tricky. You have to really understand what's going on in your body. You have to understand kind of how how suppressed your pancreas is. You have to understand what's, what you're putting in. You have to understand how your body's healing. So it can be very complex, okay? So that's a, another reason why your uh, blood sugar would be high. Because these counter-regulatory hormones, the cortisol, glucagon, and adrenaline kick in when your blood sugar is low also. So not only do you have the um, hormones kick in in the morning when you wake up, due to the hormone shift from four, five to eight, but when your blood sugar gets too low, you have adrenaline, glucagon, and cortisol and insulin come in, and that will um, definitely cause your blood sugar to go up, okay? The next one is uh, late night snacking. This is pretty obvious, but if you have late night eating, your blood sugars are gonna be higher the next morning. So sometimes people will say, well, I have a down phenomenon, but then they'll tell me that they've had you know, a meal at 11 at night before they go to bed. So you don't want to have, you just don't want to be eating at night. That's just not, especially if you have diabetes. Now you're being told by your doctors that if you're on insulin, you should eat. Well, the goal is to try to get you off insulin if you're type two, right? Or pre-diabetic. So we want to try to manage your diabetes with food and lifestyle, not with medication. So late night snacking is going to keep your blood sugars high. It just is. The next one is if you have carbs, a lot of carbs during the day, and then let's say the next day you do intermittent fasting or you're fasting and you notice that your blood sugars are high. Well, it could be because you had too many carbs the day before. Sometimes it, there's a cycle, right? It takes a little bit for those, especially if you have insulin resistance, right? If you had a lot of carbs the day before and the next day your body's trying to purge that sugar and trying to push it into the cells of the body or trying to burn it, you know, if you have insulin resistance, it, it, the sugar can't go anywhere, so it stays in the blood. So it could be from uh, too many carbs and, and foods the day before. That's number six. Number seven is low blood pressure. So if you have low blood pressure and take blood pressure medications, that activates cortisol, and cortisol raises your blood gl glucose levels. I've talked a lot in this group about stress and cortisol levels. But low blood pressure is stressful on the body and it raises cortisol. So that's another reason why you could have high blood sugars, okay? Another one is medications. If you're on cortisone injections or if you're on medications, um, blood pressure medications and many, I did a whole show, I think it was a couple weeks ago, just on the medications that raise blood sugars. And there's a lot of them, okay? So, you know, insulin is another medication that it's necessary for type one diabetics for sure, because their body doesn't make insulin. But if you're a type two and you're on insulin, you know, you're just, your insulin resistance is getting worse because eventually your cells become resistant to insulin. So you got to work on your diet and your lifestyle. Okay. So medications like insulin or steroids or injections or high blood pressure medications, statins, you know, depression medications, all of that is causing havoc in your body because it's causing stress in the body and that's raising your blood sugar stress you know when you're stressed out you raise cortisol when you have an injury right in, in, like if you um have a a broken leg and you have to go in for surgery right you can just expect that your blood sugars are going to be high during that trauma okay so there's there's lots of reasons why your blood sugars will be high when you're stressed out one is the mental stress so if you're already stressed out you're 
you're in, impacting your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, right? So when you're up, like all nervous and, and excited and upset, you're just releasing cortisol and you're shutting down your digestion. You're shutting down how your body burns, burns sugar. And so, and then you're releasing a lot of insulin. So that's causing stress in the body, right? So your blood sugar is going to be high. There's other forms of stress besides mental stress. There's trauma stress. So that's called, um, it's called acute stress. I've done a whole class on this too, but acute stress is short-term stress. So if you have a surgery, if you have an injury, if you have a bug bite, if you have a cut, you know, uh, it's just short periods of stress. And that is like a, if you get a sickness, like a cold or a flu or a short-term sickness, right? That is causing inflammation in the body and your blood sugars are going to raise. So I get, I get a lot of questions about that. Like, like after somebody's uh, had surgery or they've sprained a leg or broken arm or they've had dental work even, it's like when your body's in the process of trying to heal, your blood sugars will be elevated. So don't get stressed about that. You, you know, again, short-term uh, inflammation is a part of life. But when you have chronic inflammation, this is long-term inflammation, uh, which is stress on the body. Again, we're talking about stress here. When it's long-term long -term stress, chronic stress, long-term inflammation, then that's a different story because now you're, you're, you're releasing cortisol all the time and your blood sugar is going to be high all the time because you have inflammation all the time, right? So chronic inflammation can be things like diabetes diseases, right? And also it can be infections. It can be, you know, uh, bacteria and germs in the body that just mold toxicity, toxins, all that things that in your body that are kind of stuck and it can't detox out. That's very stressful on the body. And sometimes people have high blood sugars a lot and they just can't figure out why they're not coming down and they're eating right and they're doing all this stuff, but they have hidden stressors. They got hidden stuff. So you got to just, you got to take a look at all of these things and, and try to figure out like, what could it be? What, you know, cause it's never just one thing, right? It could be a combination of these things too, but you have to just kind of be your own detective and try to figure out like, what is it that it could be? So again, stress is huge, but there's different forms of stress. Number 10 is you could just be, forget to take your insulin. Okay. I mean, that's kind of a simple one, but yeah, if you're on insulin and you're type one, or even some of you are type two and you're on insulin, which I don't believe you should be. I think you should figure out how to get off of insulin if you're type two. But you're, you know, sometimes if you forget to take your insulin, you can your blood sugars will be high. Uh, exercise. This is very interesting because when you exercise, especially if you have insulin resistance, you will burn the glucose in the blood first. That's what your body will do when you um, exercise. But then what it does, it will pull from the tissues. The body will pull from the tissues. But once it flows from the tissues and then you exercise and you have low blood sugar, now the counter regulatory hormones kick in to raise your levels to prevent you from getting too low. So it's exercise is a good thing. I get this question a lot. It's like, well, Terry, why do I exercise? My blood sugar is so high. It should be the opposite. That's why. It's super good exercise because you're burning the sugar in the blood. And then once that's gone, you're releasing all that stored sugar that's in the cells, which is what you want right? So you release that. And then if, if the blood sugar gets high, insulin comes in and pushes it back in the cell. And then you have the counter-regulatory hormones that try to, to raise the blood sugars up a little bit, which is what you want, right? You don't want the blood sugars to get too low. That's what our bodies are doing. So exercise is always good because you are burning the bad sugars in the body, right? You're burning those sugars. So if your, your sugars elevate a little bit because you exercise, it's okay. It means that you're burning that sugar. Okay, so that's number 11. And then the next one is MSG, monosodium glutamate, raises your insulin by 300%. MSG is an exotoxin. It's very damaging to the cells and the tissues. It's hidden in a lot of spices, fast food, and restaurant chains, especially Chinese and Asian food restaurants. So stay away from MSG. Make sure you read labels because MSG will raise your insulin by 300%. If you're insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, have a hard time losing weight, you do not want MSG in your body, bottom line. Pesticides and chemicals are similar to MSG in that when it's in your body, it causes a lot of stress and toxicity in your body. And your body's always trying to find ways to detox and get rid of these chemicals. And when it does that, 
it raises your blood sugar to help in that process, okay? Artificial sweeteners is another one. If you are consuming sweet and low, which is saccharin, if you're consuming Splenda, which is sucralose, or NutraSweet, which is aspartame, these can dramatically raise your blood sugars by changing your gut flora. These sweeteners affect your gut bacteria and your microbiome. And what basically what that means is these bacteria in your gut, they help with your immune system and they help with fighting off bacteria and things like that. When you have artificial sweeteners, it actually destroys the good bacteria in your body, right? So when, when, you, um, when you eat artificial sweeteners, you're actually killing off the good bacteria and producing more bad bacteria. Okay, so we don't want, a, we need, our guts need both good and bad bacteria in them, okay? So studies have shown that when you consume sweeteners, you are increasing the bad bacteria. You're increasing it and you're getting an overabundance of bad bacteria in the gut. And that's what, what causes the problems. And then your blood sugars end up raising. So you want to make sure you're off of sweet and low, Splenda and NutraSweet. They are terrible for your your gut flora and they will raise your blood sugars. The next one is dehydration. Your kidneys rely on water to help flush out toxins and less water means that you will have higher blood concentration. So if you're dehydrated, you can basically for sure assume that your, your blood sugar should be high. So if you take your blood sugars one day and they're a little high and you know you're dehydrated, just drink some water. That will help. Sunburn. Did you guys know sunburn can also uh, cause your blood sugars to be high? Because why? Sunburn is an acute stress, right? It's an acute stress on the body. So when you get sunburn, it's, it's, it's heating up your body temperature. It's, it's causing damage to the skin. And that's, um, you know, that's, going to elevate your cortisol. So that will also cause your blood sugars to be high. The other one is nasal sprays. So, and these nasal sprays are ones that you use for colds and things like that. Some have chemicals in them that trigger your liver to make more blood sugar, like epinephrine, uh, um, pseudoephedrine. And what, that ha what happens is those chemicals in that nasal spray can trigger your liver to make more blood glucose. So by the way, Flunase, it's a, one of the top nasal sprays, has steroids in it, and that one for sure will raise your blood sugar. So just pay attention to that, right? I mean, if you're using a lot of these nasal sprays because of allergies or whatever, you just might want to consider trying a different method to you know, help with your allergies because if your blood sugars are high and you, you know that you're on these, you might want to experiment and, and go off of them and see if your blood sugars come down. Gum disease, your blood sugar will go up due to gum disease. The germs enter the bloodstream, and then when you chew or brush your teeth, they enter into your bloodstream and create an inflammatory response. So if, you know, that inflammatory response is your body's defense to these germs. So if you have type 2, you need to consider getting a deep cleaning to your dentist because having this corrected can almost be like reducing a medication because those germs in, in your mouth are very inflammatory to the body, okay? So if you are a type 2 or pre-diabetic, go make sure that you take really good care of your teeth. Go get a deep cleaning today. Excessive heat. People with diabetes are more prone to become dehydrated due to the exposure to heat. So if you are having higher blood sugars, this could be a factor. Uh, when you have type 2, there can also be damage to nerve and blood vessels that can impact your ability to sweat, so it makes it difficult for your body to cool off. So heat exhaustion is a real thing. It's very, very real. And if you don't, aren't able to sweat due to having type 2 diabetes, you want to make sure that, you know, you stay hydrated or don't go in the sun very much because that can definitely cause a stroke and a heat stroke. And that is not good. Okay. Insulin sensitivity can also be affected due to heat by heat due to stress because the body is making a lot of cortisol and adrenaline, okay? So heat definitely elevates the rate in which your body will uh, use its sugar. Coffee is another one, even without sweetener, because some people are just very sensitive to caffeine, and it's mostly people who are diabetic or type 2 or pre-diabetic because the hormone epinephrine or adrenaline is elevated when you drink coffee. And sometimes the cells can't metabolize 
the sugar when there's too much adrenaline in your system. So if you don't have type two diabetes, right, and you drink coffee, it might not impact you. But some people with type two or pre-diabetes -di pre are having, an, has an impact on their blood sugars. Some people, even if they're not diabetic, if you're taking your blood sugars and you're drinking a lot of coffee and you notice that they're elevating, it's just because your body is just a little bit more sensitive to the protein. Uh, it's a protein receptor called adenosine and it's blocked by coffee. So again, depending on the, the uh, health of your cells, coffee could be um, you know, a reason why your blood sugars are high. I am not saying you can't have coffee because coffee actually is pretty healthy all the way around in many other areas, as long as it's organic coffee because coffee has a lot of mold in it. So don't be buying grocery store over-the-counter coffee. You want to make sure that you buy coffee that is extremely clean and organic because coffee has been known to hold a lot of mold. And what's that going to do? If you drink coffee and it's moldy, you know, that's going to cause a lot of stress in the body too. So again, if your blood sugars are high and you think coffee is the reason, it could be because you have the kind of coffee you're drinking, has a lot of toxins in it, or it's because your body just needs to... Um, it needs uh, to, to heal. The insulin resistance needs to heal first before you start consuming more coffee. Okay, the last one, sleep deprivation. And I know this shouldn't be a shock to you guys, but I'm telling you, too little sleep will cause your body not to use e insulin efficiently. So if you are not sleeping, your body will not use insulin efficiently. Also, um, it can majorly impact your body's ability to uh, you know, um, produce sleep hormones like, like HGH, human growth hormone, and hormones that actually are designed to help you heal your body. If you're not sleeping, you're not going to produce human growth hormone. So you need to sleep for many reasons, but even one night of not sleeping will cause a lot of stress on your body. Sleep loss increases cortisol, which raises glucose levels. Sleep loss affects insulin se sensitivity greatly. And sleep deprivation causes oxidative stress and inflammation, which also affects your blood glucose levels. So I can't tell you enough how important it is to get sleep. Sleep is – there's so many things that you, you need sleep for. You need sleep to heal the cells. You need sleep to repair. You need sleep to be able to heal your insulin resistance. You need sleep to decrease inflammation. You need sleep to lose body fat. I mean, sleep is so important. So if you are not getting sleep, you definitely will have an imbalance in blood sugars and your cortisol levels. Okay, you guys. So that is the 21 reasons why you guys need to take a look at, you know, what any of these could be impacting your blood sugars if you have high blood sugars and you're not sure sure why go back and rewatch this print off this list whatever you got to do because some of these you might be like oh hmm, it could be that and it could be a combination of them all too uh these you know it's never just one thing so uh, you know a lot of you might have a combination of things going on so i would just pick one or two that you can focus on maybe adjusting if there's a, if a lot of these tonight when you're watching this you're thinking oh my gosh that could be me that could be me that could be me that could be me and you're like overwhelmed by it just pick a couple that you can be intentional about working on and see if that impacts your blood sugar. And, and just every week, maybe pick a different thing and see, and see if it um, helps you lower those sugars. Okay, you guys?